All right, now it's time for the cool stuff. We got a somatome uh, calcium scan here, and this is actually going to scan my arteries for any amount of calcification or calcium buildup, which in and of itself can be a cardiovascular risk factor. If you ever read the work of folks like uh, Dr. William Davis, who's been on my podcast, we actually talk about this test on that show, and uh, it, it can be a, a really good indicator of uh, cardiovascular risk potential. So we're going to find out if I've got too much calcium in my arteries, which could be a result of everything from inflammation to atherosclerosis to, uh, shockingly, even excess vitamin D intake or else excess calcium intake. So it's going to be interesting to see, see what results look like. Someone who is just 44. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, all the white. So stuff the, is the large calcium. white, that's all calcium deposits. That's a huge okay. score. This person mm -hmm. has a score in the thousands. Wow. And a stent. I mean, at 44. Okay. So they're not doing so well. Uh, you have calcium also in an artery over here. This is the left anterior descending artery mm -hmm. territory. Calcium in the left oh. descending artery. Right here. Mm -hmm. here. There's small calcifications there. And mm -hmm. then on the right side, there's uh, calcification mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. uh, the score uh, is 42. Mm -hmm. Now, that score isn't particularly high when mm -hmm. we compare it with people who have obstructions in their coronary arteries. Usually, right. usually they have quite high calcium scores in the hundreds or the thousands. Uh, on the other hand, at your age, 38, we typically don't see many people with calcium at all. Interesting. So the takeaway here is it's not a huge amount of calcium, but it's showing up early. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of people would consider that bad news, uh, and it depends on how you look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you say, gee, I don't like it being there early, I guess you could say that's, that's bad. On the other hand, if you don't have a test like this, you don't know that it's there. Mm -hmm. And so then you kind of go along and you get to be 45, 50, maybe 55, 60, and then all of a sudden, you got a lot of heart disease. Yeah. Whereas by spotting this when you're 38 and saying, hey, this is starting early, mm -hmm. then you work with your doctor to slow this down uh, considerably. Uh, and it depends upon what's causing it. Mm -hmm. And in most cases, we don't know every mm -hmm. reason why it happens. We know if you have high cholesterol, it contributes to this, but inflammation mm -hmm. usually kicks it off. Mm -hmm. uh, you uh, aren't obese, so you probably don't have insulin resistance and uh, elevated glucose. That's, mm -hmm. that's the most common reason we see. Yeah. 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 Uh, but heredity has a great deal to do with this. Hmm. Uh, Interesting. As well, so we can't explain everything. Uh, what we do know is there is some component of inflammation that that uh, causes the endothelium, the inner lining of the blood vessel, uh, to get inflamed, and then in, in conjunction with cholesterol in your body, uh, there gets to be plaque, and that plaque, as it uh, heals, becomes calcium. Did get it done mm -hmm. yet? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Oh, you're looking good. And uh, yeah, a few, a few little spots. Yeah, well, you know, this is yeah. like the pregnancy yeah. rule. Yeah. The yeah. pregnancy rule is you have plaque. Yep, yep. So this is like the deal. This is like knowing what the dealer's holding. You ever play blackjack? I'm a little bit plaqued. Yeah. How old are you? 38. Yeah, this is, this is uh, yeah. young. This is yeah. very young. So it's yeah. early. Yeah. It's yeah. early, yeah. And it, you have a family history of heart disease? No. I would, I would hazard a guess. It's, it's possible that some inflammation might be contributory due to uh -huh. about... 20 years of competing in some pretty masochistic, uh, you know, adventure sports and right. ultra endurance sports. Uh -huh. You know, lots of Ironman triathlons uh -huh. and. And you know your cholesterol's okay. Along those lines. Yeah, yeah cl cl well, HDL is, is somewhat high. Um, LDL is fine. HDL to triglyceride ratio is good. Uh, LPA is low. CRP is low. Uh -huh. So this tells um, you it's not low enough. Mm-hmm. 
So with every, you know, there's no such thing as one number fits mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. So if you had no plaque, I would mm -hmm. say that, I, mean, I don't know your numbers, but this says that whatever your cholesterol is, it's too high. Uh-huh. Because you shouldn't have, you should really, at 38, you shouldn't have any plaque. I mean, this is, mm -hmm. this is a finding, what's the percentile for his age? It's over the 95th. Yeah, so you have actually more plaque than 95% of people wow. your age. Wow, wow, this is good to know. Yeah, this is why they intervene now, because probably if you intervene now with cholesterol lowering, what will happen, it probably will save you a lot of yeah. years of, yeah. of life. Good. So I was Good. surprised to see this actually. It's very yeah. unusual to see 38-year-olds. Yeah. Well, I'm going I'm to be headed off to do some some research on uh, on calcium scan score lowering. Yeah. yeah. For yeah. sure. I told him that it's actually good news to find this out when you're young. Oh yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Doctor uh, Doctor William Davis uh, is the guy I first learned about this scan from, and um, I might pick his brain a little bit too about uh, some recommendations he may well, have. These are very underutilized. And then, if, if everyone had oh, the yeah. scan done, they would, you would yeah. be preventing a lot of heart oh, attacks. Oh, simple and quick, too. Yep. Now, do you guys uh, send me the results, or do you release these to the doc? Or? Well, if you leave your docs, we can release it to both. So if you, okay. If you, if you, if What's you the best number, way to do that? Just make sure you fill that, give the name of your doctor, and then your contact information. And we can Out send at the, the uh, front desk? Yeah. With, okay, with, perfect. Uh, Ruby. Perfect. It's interesting. So, you know, this is, this is uh, it is what it is. So, yeah. it's, it's, you know, the devil you know, they say, is better than the devil yep. you don't know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, I'm, I'm glad to have to have found this. Yeah. This is actually surprising to me, but at the same time, I like to find, this is why I'm doing these tests, yeah, exactly. to find this information out. This is really important mm -hmm. for heart health and for, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a, it's a really important prevention yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, exam that you took. Yeah. So, this is what we do, that we take this information and you integrate it into your treatment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and you mitigate risk. So, yeah. you know, this actually allows us to personalize your risk. So yeah. saying that a particular number is normal or good is actually is actually not the way to look at it. What right. you have to do is you have to take the number, your goal, which is related to your risk. So mm -hmm. in your case, you know, a lot of doctors will say, oh, your cholesterol is okay. But, you know, it may be okay for some, but, you know, it's not okay for you. So, you know, so this doesn't save lives. It's the action you take Yep. With this, yep. actually saves lives. All right. All right. Well, cool. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. You're All welcome. Right. You're welcome, gentlemen. All right. And so, how often does one typically retest well, for a protocol? Positive, test? You don't retest. You now, don't retest. What you may want to do, what you may want to do at some point, maybe three, four, five down the years down the line, you may want to get what they call a coronary CT, which is where they get mm -hmm. contrast. Okay. Because this particular test only looks at calcified plaque. Yep. So in a guy like you, you know, this may be the tip of the iceberg. Yep. So what you may want to do is actually get the full coronary CT, mm -hmm. where we can look at not only the heart plaque, but we can actually look at the soft plaque, and then we can look along the entire arterial supply, mm -hmm. and we can tell you if there's any soft plaque, which is actually the more dangerous plaque, if it's located in any area. Fantastic. It's going to be like three, four, five years down the road? Yeah, I'd say in about three years down the road, you should do a full coronary okay. CT. And that's where Good. we get the contrast. Um, and it's a much more comprehensive exam. But this exam, I think, will provide a lot of benefit to you because it really represents, you know, knowing what's, knowing exactly what the status of atherosclerosis. So All right. That's something I would do for a coronary CT angiogram in about three years. Noted. Okay. All right. Good luck. Cool. Good luck. All right. Thanks, Doc. Pardon me?